And indeed, what I did was good. The only thing is that have I knew that 24 hours before that, this person wouldn't need to have an amputation. But when he was there, he needed to have an amputation. And why I'm telling you this? I'm telling you this to let you know that the moment you see something that maybe you have never seen before in your life, but you have been studying about it, you have been reading about it in the books, at that moment you realize this is it. And nobody can tell you that it isn't like that because that is it. And that's what m we do as a medical. You start it in the student time, but you keep on doing it as a professional too. Okay, so for that I'm going to tell, to, I need to tell you all congratulations. Congratulations because what you have choose to do for now is something you know exactly that you're going to do it because it's from your heart. Okay, congratulations one more time. Thank you, Dr. Dorothy, for that inspiring speech. Next on up, we would like to call the Dean of Avalon University School of Medicine to share some words of advice for the incoming class. Please welcome Dr. Satish Arja to the stage. Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to Avalon University School of Medicine White Course Ceremony, September 2022. Uh, actually speaking, uh, I have right now, I have mixed feelings. Actually, I'm not prepared for what I'm going to say now. I prepared something else, but before I start my speaking, I thought maybe let me explain what I'm going through. I have many feelings at this point of time. So just now I left India, I came here. So I was a little bit emotional. I met my mother. And also I met my first teacher in my life. She was my first teacher from uh, first grade to fourth grade. And I think she is now 70 years old. I felt so emotional when I left my mother and also my first teacher. You know, I think why I'm saying this for all medical students who are joining the medical school is the most important people in your life are your parents and definitely your teachers. And that's what you're going to meet all the teachers from MD1 to MD5 and after even for clinical rotations also. Please respect your teachers and they're invaluable. Uh, and I must say that they cannot be replaceable, especially the teachers. And I'm, I, I never say these things in my, any of my speeches, but definitely I would like to share a few things about my mother. The reason is, as I said, I just left India now. I just want to share what I have gone through in my life. My father expired when I was 12. And it was so difficult for me uh, to finish the schooling and college. And uh, it was difficult for me financially, family-wise, and many, many personal problems I have faced. But finally, I entered the medical school. So I finished my medical school. Now today I'm here. So it's all because of my mother. So definitely I would like to thank my mother. And I, I can't say it in words, but only thing I can show is my gratitude towards her. That's the only thing I would like to say. And that's why I said uh, it was a little bit emotional for me. And also I'm excited to see the new students. Definitely we have the new students here. We are all excited about all of you who are joining the wonderful profession and noble profession. Definitely we are all excited. On behalf of entire Avalon School faculty and administration, I must, I must say that we are all excited to receive you and to educate you to prepare world-class physicians. And the third thing is the good news. Uh, I think all of you know it already, but definitely I would like to mention that that Avalon University School of Medicine received full accreditation from ACCM, Accreditation Commission for Colleges of Medicine for six years. I think all of you know about it, but still I would like to share that sweet news is because this is what we are going through, right? So definitely it's very important for all, all of us to know. I think many of you here might not know that there are 70 to 80 medical schools in the Caribbean. We call them as half-shore medical schools. 
Out of these 70 to 80 medical schools, there are only seven schools which are fully accredited, and we are proud to be one among those seven medical schools. And I think the most of the credit will go to Dr. Shaukat Fateh because he is the one who gave us the vision and how to drive the medical school. And also, I would like to let you know that uh, Evalon University School of Medicine is accredited by both ACCM and CAMHP. And CAMHP means Caribbean Accreditation Authority. And we are the only one medical school in the Caribbean which are accredited by both of them. That is also definitely, we are all proud of it, and you should be proud of it. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Fateh. But before beginning my speech, and I would like to also thank uh, the Minister of Health, Dorothy Anga, Dr. Dorothy Anga, for her support throughout the entire process. And uh, when the accreditation team come here, they would like to meet the minister. When the accreditation team come here, they expect that, OK, we have an appointment with the minister. We should go and see her in our office. That's what their expectations. But when we told them that, no, the ministry is coming here, and she would like to support the school, they were so surprised. And they were so, what you call, felt happy to receive the ministry. Thank you so much, minister. And I, I, it wouldn't be possible without your help. I, I must say that. Because we have wonderful people here in Avalon. We have wonderful administrative members, we have wonderful faculty members, and we have wonderful students also. With the help of all of them, we were able to successful in the last accreditation process. It's all because of faculty, administration, supporters, well-wishers of Avalon, and students of Avalon. Thank you so much for all of you. And maybe this is the time for me to start the actual speech for tonight. Dear distinguished guests, Minister of Health, Environment, and Nature, Dr. Dorothy Peters Anga, Chancellor of Avalon University School of Medicine, Dr. Shaukat Fateh, and uh, Mrs. Chancellor, Mrs. Fateh, thank you so much, and uh, Inspector of General of Public Health, Dr. Kelly, and our special guest for tonight from UK, Dr. Rajpura, uh, students, parents, faculty, staff, and administration. I want to add my warm welcome to the Avalon University School of Medicine White Coat Ceremony, September 2022. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Minister of Health uh, for her support throughout the process and since the establishment of this medical school. And health professions education is about learning to care for and about fellow human beings and the environment who we co-inhabit. So you are, all, you are going to take care of your patients, but not only just you are taking care of your patients, you are the environment where the patients and we live in. Health as a resource for daily life and well-being emerges from a constellation of independent conditions embedded in webs of social, cultural, political, economic, geographic events that influence access to food, water, shelter, employment, education, safety, peace, a stable ecosystem, sustainable resources, social justice, and equity. The reason why I'm saying that, the main reason that we see now across the world is health disparities. This is the one thing which we all should focus on. And I, know, I think you understand what is the meaning of health disparities. Everybody is not accessible to the healthcare equally. There is a lot of injustice in that. And also you know that a lot of physicians are what you call aggregated or accumulated in the urban areas than rural areas. We as Avalon University School of Medicine, you have seen the mission statement. The mission statement says that we prepare competent physicians who can serve the local communities and across the globe. And we should be ready to serve underserved populations and underserved communities too. Becoming a health profession is necessarily relational and dynamical. See, right now we are talking about all about artificial intelligence and machine learning, robots, doing all these things. So they have introduced artificial intelligence even in diagnosis and treatment in many of these things. In, in future, there will be what you call some things will be done by the machines. But I would say that definitely the rapport between the physician and the patient is the most important one. And even if you look at the stats, the most important reason for what you call failure of any treatment or therapeutic intervention is non-compliance. This non-compliance can be what you call mitigated only when we have good relationship with our patient. For that, you need communication and interpersonal skills. And the patient should have trust on you, should have confidence on you. That can be developed with your professionalism, communication, and interpersonal skills. So relationships are about the quality of exchange, what we have, that is communication, and the extent to which they are adaptive for shared understanding, health, and well-being. 
I have no doubt that 2020 will go down in history as one of the most notable due to the COVID-19 pandemic. For the entire world, it was a time for hardship and change. I realized that pandemic has also has given us time for learning and growth. As I worked as a medical educator, this is what I learned as a medical educator. Healthcare professionals work tirelessly to not only continue providing excellent patient care, but also to develop and institute strategies manage the crisis safety. So this is also very important. We would like to see all our graduates to be leaders, not just as a healthcare providers. Okay, uh, so healthcare professionals work tirelessly, as, as I mentioned. Each day, day, their leadership helped everyone cope with the stress and working through the unknown and served as a constant source of inspiration. To me, you are doing the white coat is the culmination of lifetime of hard work, dedication, and sacrifice on the part of your parents, who worked so hard to give you the opportunity to fulfill your dreams. It is also a symbol of expectations I have for you, to one day to be a physician leader, like those I saw while working during the pandemic. The medical field that is at core collaborative. Professionals come from all over the world with the different backgrounds to serve a single purpose, provide the highest quality of care, for those in need. I knew that you are joining a group of individuals who would always be there for you and push you to be better than you ever imagined. You have both the privilege and responsibility to part of this team. The next four years won't be easy, but when times become difficult, you look at your white coat and remind yourself the future you are working towards and the patients will one day you have the privilege to care for. Do and one more thing, the last thing I would like to mention before I finish my speech, is that most of the people say that, do what you love. That's what people say that. But I would say that, love what you do. So this is the most important thing. Sometimes we might be in a situation where we don't like it, but you have to love whatever you do. Thank you so much, enjoy the rest of the evening. And also, if you don't mind, I would like to introduce my faculty members also, if, uh, if everyone uh, is okay with it. And Dr. Kelly, I would like to introduce him. He is the Inspector of General of Public Health. And uh, Dr. Kelly, he, is, he teaches epidemiology and biostatics for semester one students. Dr. Kelly, thank you so much, Dr. Kelly. And Dr. Bala, she is not here. She is our Dean of Basic Sciences. She did master's in uh, pharmacology from uh, Michigan State University, and she finished her PhD also. She has four fellowships in medical education, but she is not here today, but she is our professor of pharmacology. Dr. Praveen, she is a professor of physiology. Dr. Praveen, please come here, Dr. Praveen, if you don't mind. Yeah, maybe they, you, they can see you, right? And now, just now, somebody said that be prepared for uh, Dr. Praveen's pre-reading assignment, something like that. <laughs> But uh, you have to know the other way also. He is the most, uh, what you call, uh, the smart and charismatic guy on campus. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and uh, I would like to also thank uh, uh, the other deans, uh, Dr. Wilson and Dr. Ghani, who are the dean of clinical sciences and uh, dean of postgraduate education. They are not here, but I would like to thank both of them. And Dr. Reshma, she did uh, MD with the Avalon University School of Medicine, and also she did her master's in psychology. And she is the course director for behavioral science. <laughs> Dr. Lambo, he did his MD, and he's also for, he did his PhD, and he is specialist in immunology also. Dr. Lambo, he is the course director for evidence-based medicine. Just uh, give me a few, few minutes just to introduce our own faculty members. I won't take too much time. And Dr. Suma, she is a professor of pathology, and she did her MBBS from Armenia, and she did diploma in pathology and also master's in pathology, and uh, she is our professor of pathology. <laughs> Dr. Nawasu, so he is a professor of anatomy. Please, Dr. Nawasu. He is a, a surgeon by training from Nigeria, and he did his master's in bariatric medicine, and he is also now doing, I think, a master's in medical education, Dr. Nawasu. And I think he did master's in theological sciences too, I believe. 
Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Nawasu, for sharing your knowledge with our students. And he is the one who is, whom you are going to see in the first semester itself from MD1. And uh, I would like to introduce Dr. Balramaya also. He did his MBBS from, uh, from Tamil Nadu, India, and he finished his master's in medicine. MD medicine, and he is a professor of internal medicine, clinical skills, and he teaches general pathology too. And he has vast experience. He worked in many countries. Uh, Dr. Balramaya, thank you so much for uh, your wisdom and your experience for our students. And uh, I would like to call Dr. Kumar. He completed his PhD in biochemistry and genetics, and he teaches biochemistry and genetics for us. He also has vast experience in many countries, India, Malaysia, and Guyana. So he worked for many places and for many medical schools. And I, I must say that he is, he is one of the most hardworking guys that I have ever seen, especially in providing the resources to the students. I, if you see his PowerPoints and question banks and all those things that he provides, you will never what you call look for other resources. Thank you so much, Dr. Kumar. And uh, Dr. Tariq. And uh, he is a course director for clinical skills. And he is the pillar for clinical skills, I must say that. And he is the one who established the clinical skills lab with the standardized patients, mannequins, and everything. And he is the one who taught us how to teach clinical skills. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Tariq, for your expertise in the standardized patient program. And uh, Dr. Sharmala. And he is a professor of neuroscience, and he did his MD from Ukraine, and he did his PhD also in anatomy. And I, I'm, I'm one of his biggest fan, I, I must say that. Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Shamlo, nobody can beat your worksheets. I think the students must know it better than me. I have seen many times your worksheets. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Shamlo, for what you are doing for your students. And Dr. Rohit, and he is uh, I, I must say that he is the newest addition, but he already fit into the program, and he's doing a wonderful job, Dr. Rohit. He did his PhD in microbiology and immunology. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Rohit. And, uh, and also, we call her uh, what you call one of the junior faculty, but she is not junior. Dr. Ala, please come. She's not junior anymore. <laughs> oh, students like her anything. I asked the HSF department, who? counsels the students the most, who gives the feedback to the students most. And Dr. Praveen told me it's obviously Dr. Ala. <laughs> so because students like her to go to her and take feedback from her. And uh, these are the wonderful faculty members that we have. And you must appreciate them. And I witnessed their, what you call, their hard work. And I witnessed their willingness to help the students. And uh, I must say that I am jealous for having what you call by looking at you. The reason is I have never seen such kind of faculty members in my medical school. I'm not undermining my, my medical teachers, but when you see in government medical colleges in India, maybe every department will have four or five faculty members. For example, in physiology department, you will see uh, like four faculty members in physiology. It doesn't mean that everybody is good. But when teacher is good, we try to learn the notes and we try to take the PowerPoints and we try to take everything from them. If the teacher is not good, the only thing that you can do is self-directed learning, self-regulated learning. We call it as self-regulated learning. And it is very important. Self-directed learning and self-regulated learning are the key aspects of any student at higher education level. And you call yourself as students of higher education. And don't expect that everybody must teach 100% in the classroom. And they will try to give you 50% of it, or maybe 80% of it, or 90% of it. Whatever it is, it depends on the teacher. But other 50% must come from you. And we give the required knowledge and information. Don't blame at the end of the semester that I'm not doing well, I, didn't, I should have asked this before. These are all late, late comments. If you say that I should have asked this for at the beginning of the semester, that is too late. And with this advice, I would like to ask you to work hard and enjoy what you are doing in the medical school. And that's all I can say that. If you, I hope that most of you have joined this profession or this medical school because of your will and wish, right? As we, as we said, love what you do or do what you love. So it's an option up to you. But I, must, I will say my life, my life taught me do what you love. Forget about what you love. All, all, it's all about you love what you are doing. 
As long as you enjoy what you're doing, nothing look like what you call I'm working hard, or people say that most of the physicians are sacrificing their personal lives. All these things, people will say that. Even I must say that physicians sacrifice their lives. That is true. But at the time of the medical school, you're not sacrificing anything unless you work hard, because you are here for a purpose. Remember that purpose for all the time. OK? Thank you so much. And also, I would like to thank our administrator. I would, I would also like to thank uh, other administrative uh, members, Dr. Amin and uh, Mrs. Sharisa, uh, Ms. Arya, Ms. Mahdi, everyone, I would like to thank you so much for your, what you call, hard work and dedication towards Avalon University School of Medicine. Thank you so much. All right, so thank you very much, Dr. Arja, for these nice words of wisdom. And our next speaker for this evening is Dr. Servin Kelly. Dr. Kelly currently serves as the Inspector General of Health in Curaçao, in addition to teaching epidemiology and biostatistics here at Avalon. Thank you, and a warm welcome. Yes. Yes, good evening, um, Honorable Minister of Health, uh, Dr. Shokat. Um, you know, school, Dr. Arja, also Dr. Richpat, and Mrs. Uh, Chancellor, um, all um, faculty members, students, and all are invited. Um, welcome again, and to the students, very welcome um, to the Avalon. Uh, you've made a step and your life will never again be the same, in, in good sense. I mean, uh, because actually you're chosen a career to, uh, that you're going for something you're going to be 24 hours per day, either. Uh, and the best thing to be a doctor is start being a doctor right now. Uh, because don't think you're a student and you're going to become a doctor one day. No, you are a doctor on the way to graduate as a doctor one day. But you have to uh, gather your elements together uh, from now on. There are a couple of things that you have to um, uh, be very careful about uh, because, for example, when I started my study, I used to think that biochemistry, okay, you have to go through it, physics, you have to go through it, uh, biostatistics, you have to go through it, biochemistry, yes, okay, and pathology, yes, uh, you have to go through it. But at the end of the day, until today, you get confronted with things that lead you back to your basics, okay? Uh, I was confronted with uh, some people that told me, yes, can and water, that's it, that's it, that's it. And then I asked them, uh, do you remember the henderson Hasselbell uh, reaction? Uh, do you know that formula again? And um, I said, okay, if you want the blood to become alkaline, uh, so otherwise the blood would be acidic, um, don't you think that everybody should have been dead by now if their pH was too, uh, too low? So, and then people start thinking, and then said, okay, but what we're talking about now is the basics of the basic sciences. You had them one day, and still every day they apply. And sometimes they apply in good sense, sometimes they can be very uh, painful. Um, at Inspectorate, we see a lot of things. Um, the common denominator is communication with patients. I think Dr. Arja mentioned it, Dr. Um, Minister of Health uh, also uh, mentioned it. Communication with your patients. Empathy with your patients. If your patients, they might become 60 years old, 70 years old, 80 years old, they're still humans, okay? They might be uh, protesting young adults, they're still humans. Okay, they might have a different view of life than you have, but they are still human, and you have to try to stand in their standpoint, uh, but regarding and still carrying your knowledge. Um, your knowledge is something you're gathering here, but you should also keep gathering it for always, okay? uh, because things change. When I started to study, I think in the Netherlands there were eight CT scans in whole Netherlands. MRI did not exist. Okay? When I finished my studies, 
You could diagnose myocardial infarction with ECG, ST elevation, ST depression. Atropinins did not exist yet. These are things that are now standard parts of care. So the things keep, um, keep um, evolving, evolving, and evolving. In my study, I learned something about influenza. But MERS and SARS, we didn't talk about them. Now you see COVID. We don't know everything about COVID yet. The latest, latest thing is that we probably suspect that in long COVID patients, uh, also the brain size is affected because uh, COVID also attacks the, uh, the, the brain cells. Okay, the other thing is that probably the mRNA um, is probably inco being incorporated into the DNA of at least liver cells, and we are checking for other cells also that becomes part of our genome. So what does it mean? Now, it does mean that when you graduate, you will be confronted with all of that, and you're in the part of it right now, and you have to grasp and take it uh, with you, and the only thing you can take it with you is to see COVID not only as a something that is determining your life and your lifestyle and maybe reduce your freedom, but it's part of something you have to learn right now because you have to apply it later on with your patients. We don't know where COVID, COVID is going to, okay? Uh, we don't know how the vaccine development may be. We don't know, and especially long COVID, there is a long way to go. We don't know what's waiting for us. So for you, it's the challenge to take it with you. And the only thing to, to, that is possible to, to make it possible to take it with you is your focus, okay? There is a saying that says, your focus determines your reality. I, I saw, I think, one part of Star Wars, and there's the one thing that, that um, um, I remembered, because there was a young guy who said, I want to go back to Earth because I, I uh, need to go there. And um, the other guy said to him, listen, you're here, and your focus determines your reality. And for um, in my study time, my focus was, okay, this study, I want to become a doctor, so this is my focus. Everything else uh, was secondary uh, to it. The second thing, okay, I'm with a scholarship, so um, let's be careful. The other thing, but other things in life uh, did not matter. At least that's what I thought. But at the end of the day, um, like Dr. Erger said, your parents are the most important persons in your life. They form you, they guide you, they put you on the path. But the next thing that puts you on your life path on becoming who you are is your study of medicine. At least for me, I was not only uh, taught medicine, but I was formed by medicine. The way I um, see life, the way we had to discuss opinions of a lot of things uh, in life, besides uh, the knowledge. And that is what you get during your study. So your study is a journey that will affect you. It will affect your character. It will affect your, um, the being, who you are, and you must focus on it. Don't worry that if you focus on medicine, you will miss other parts of life. No, other parts of life are there also. They're in there uh, also, and you will come across uh, those other parts of life also, and you will be uh, formed. So the career you choose right now, it's not just a career, okay? And I think also what Dr. Ari said, if you don't love what you do, it's going to be a nightmare. So um, the only way to go through this, you choose something because you thought, hey, that's what I, I love to go that direction. So you have to stick onto that and cultivate uh, that love because that's, that love is what will keep you focused because focus is the thing you need. Focus, 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 okay? Um, often we see uh, before exams, uh, students stress a lot. You see it, why? You say something in class at the beginning, everybody's glad or everybody's serious, but right before an exam, you say something and it's silent in class. Because why? Everybody's stressed. Hey, the exams are coming, the exams are coming. And then, um, what we then go through is the, um, the planning of your exams. You should be planning uh, beforehand, incorporate it in your lifestyle, because you need to prepare for it. Because when you see a patient, um, you cannot say, 
uh, patient, I can't help you because you're in the 30%, I didn't consider relevant for the exam. So you net just in the 30%, so there's nothing I can do for you. You cannot do that. You don't know what a patient will bring to you. So the only way to avoid it is to um, keep focused, uh, make everything you can get uh, a part of you, try to read as possible, uh, try to um, uh, gather as much information as, as possible. And um, regarding your behavior, uh, being focused, uh, because doctors have uh, principles uh, they have to stick to. You will go through them by the uh, Hippocratic Oath, um, but you have to make them part of your being from now on. You're in the world, you're not alone in the world, you have to cooperate with colleagues. Start in class cooperating with your colleagues because if you wanna take notes in class, um, probably you will not be able to take 100% of notes. Your colleague students also will not be, but together the three or four of you can assemble, reassemble the material that the notes are complete because you each contribute to tell and then you all can enjoy the benefits of the, um, of the cooperation. And that's something you should be uh, uh, focusing on and because that's something um, you will need in your life as a, um, as a student. So basic thing, keep focused and take care of your health, okay? Um, you are what you eat. Uh, so um, be careful what you eat, uh, eat healthy. Uh, have a, uh, one way or another, have a stress management program uh, because uh, for a couple of reasons. First, not only to reduce, uh, you reduce your stress. Second, if you have a stress management program, you are able to focus better. It enhances your memory and it uh, gives you a better uh, system to uh, absorb the things and form yourself into uh, full flesh uh, physicians. So um, I have to stop. Uh, congratulations, you made it so far. If you made it so far, people always said, uh, and I think it's true, if you were able to get through high school, if you have the love and focus, you should be able to become a physician and if you have the empathy, you might be able to help your patients with your knowledge. Thank you. That was great. Thank you very much, Dr. Kelly. We would now like to welcome the next speaker onto the stage, Dr. Reshma. Dr. Reshma is the Associate Dean of Admissions at Avalon University School of Medicine. She's also part of MD2 and MD3 Faculty of Mind, Brain, and Behavior course. So please join us on the stage, Dr. Rishma. Thank you, Hazim. Thank you, Zaira. Good evening, everyone. It's good to see the audience, the new students, because we don't get to see all of you guys in the class on the very first day until we get to the classroom in the MD2. Good evening, everybody. I would like to start with the actual speech. Good evening, distinguished guests, Dr. Dorothy, Dr. Fateh, Dr. Rajpura, and all my um, dear colleagues, as well as my new students and my faculty and my staff. First, to begin with, I would say that this is the journey you are going to start toward the career of medicine. The very first day, you have already met everybody. You have started one week already. So wherever you wanted to reach with your goal, you have already achieved the first stage of your goal. And I wish you very congratulations for achieving your first goal of your journey to begin with medical school. I'm saying this is a proud moment for me at this moment being in front of you and talking to you and giving the speech. It's a proud moment because at one point, I started my journey just like that. You are sitting here, and I understand that you have many questions, much stress, nervousness, curiosity, a lot of things going on in your mind, which I was in the same feeling when I started my medical journey. And see where I am, and definitely I would love to see you guys 
as my new future colleagues very soon, in maybe five, six years, right? So good luck with everything. Success doesn't come straight and very easy. Success comes with ups and downs. So don't take that, oh, I have failed, or I, have, I got less marks, or I got high marks. Nothing has to be permanent. Everything, you can change it. You can make your failure into a success. You learn by failing. But it doesn't mean that you should not be working for it. Work hard and stay, stay motivated, determined. Your goal will be achieved. A lot of my um, colleagues, my um, dean, Dr. Arja, Dr. Fateh, all of them are very experienced, and they will be the one who, who can give you the better advices. But if I have to give the advice at one point, I would say, from now onwards, start eating, playing, thinking, drinking, everything, medicine, nothing else. But it doesn't mean that you should not enjoy your life. You should. On the very first day of the journey, Dr. Arja mentioned that you should be giving yourself some time. During the one week, if you are working very hard, maybe Saturday or Sunday, you should give some time to yourself and enjoy. But do not enjoy too much that next day you have to stress too much. So work on your progress and success. Success will be yours, for sure. Good luck, everybody. Thank you very much. Have a great day ahead. So thank you very much, Dr. Rishma. Next up, we have Dr. Tariq Ahmed. Dr. Tariq is the Associate Professor of Medical Ethics and Clinical Skills at Avalon. Please give him a warm welcome. Dear uh, all the guests, all the new students, welcome, congratulations. Welcome to an exciting time and the beginning of the live altering experience. You are now part of the group of uh, Kisra ordinary talent people in medicine. As someone who was in your shoes a few years ago, I know you are both eager but also apprehensive. This feeling are rightly full so. You will be fascinated by how much you can learn and even more by how much you can forget. Medical school is all about long-term retention and you will figure out in the first few months how to study. Try not to be overwhelmed. This is everyone trial periods. The great part about medical education and training is that you will continue to see a lot of of the same topics over and over. So don't worry if you don't master all the materials in the first time around. In this first year, you will build a framework for the rest of your medical educations. And I can tell you that you will be incredibly proud of how much your brain transform in the middle of years. It is truly one of the best feelings I have experienced and I can't imagine myself doing anything else. It will be challenging though. You will be spend so much time uh, boring over lectures that you may ever uh, even start uh, even to dream about diagnosis as you attempt to get a peaceful night's sleep. Someday you will cry for sure and that's okay. The sheer volume of knowledge you must gain to be responsible for people, lives, and trafficking. Find your support system and learn on them. You need to become comfortable with not knowing everything. This is harder than it sounds. Medical education or medical school select people just like you who are intelligent and have excellence in life. But it just is not reasonable to retain every significant details of every biochemistry pathway or disease pathology. If you are machines and can do this, good for you. As for everyone else, remain humble and open to learning. Never think you know it all and never become too confident in your skills. This is, will take time, will take time over and over 
medical school is a marathon, it's not a sprint. You must be kind to yourself. Always learn to be kind to yourself. Take a study break to work out of, or cook a healthy meal. Learn ac uh, to accept that not every single day will be a great study day. And even more importantly, learn when to call it quiet. You need to be have a life outside of studying, so good to, to, good to go to movie one times at night with your friends. Call your mom, make time to play the instrument that you love, dancing for example. Hold on the tide to what makes you a human and don't leave behind your other passions just because you are working to become a physician, your future patients will appreciate this. Lastly, I have, I have to warn you, and the sum of things will challenge you more than a heavy science hold. My future colleague, you are not a fraud. You are a unique and capable individual with your own flaws, just like me, just like everyone in your class, and you deserve to become uh, here don't lose your sense of purpose in comparing yourself to others. It may be hard to appreciate what makes you unique at time, but I hope that you will come to embrace it. Finally, welcome all. I wish you the best as usual. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Tariq. Our final, final speaker for the evening is the Chancellor of Avalon University School of Medicine, Dr. Shokat Fateh. Please join us on the stage, Dr. Fateh. Thank you, Hazim and Zaira. That was very nice, did a good job. I don't know what to say because I started thinking that I'll have an inspirational speech, but I was actually inspired by the speeches that people gave. So maybe I should comment on that first. First of all, thank you, uh, Minister, and especially your sacrifice of spend, not spending time with your uh, daughter. And we took time away from her it's uh, they were going to have dinner together so i really appreciate that and everybody else here all the faculty members and everybody else and again i was uh, doc, dr arja i i was really touched by what you said please cherish your moments with your mom and whoever uh, that you left behind your teacher and other people in india uh, i don't have that chance you know uh, I've grown old and I have lost parents. I, I, I lost a sister, so <laughs> it's tough. But uh, please cherish your time. It's, it's very important that uh, you spend your time with your teachers. So let's go back to what I'm here for, which is to really try to encourage you to do good things. And uh, good things are like studying hard, and I think you all know that. Be smart, you don't have to be Einstein's. I think you'll be fine if you just do your time management properly. You know, everybody has said that you, you, you work two hours before, two hours after your lectures and go, go uh, attend the lecture and you, you'll, you'll learn. I don't think you need to be really very smart. Very smart in time management, and then hard work. And I think you, you will achieve a lot of good things like all these professors you have. And I think I, the best thing I have done for the university was really to hire Dr. Arja and Dr. Bala. There was, there was, there was only two initially in 2006, if you can believe that. They taught everything. And then they, I never got in the way of them. I let them uh, hire the faculty, uh, develop the, the curriculum, get on with the accreditation and all those things. So I don't want to take credit for that, but I think uh, you can see the results. The, the professors that are here are very good, and uh, they are probably world class. And uh, I think, uh, I think you, you will have a tremendous education. And uh, if you do the right things, 
I'm very convinced that you'll be very good doctors. Uh, you know, having said that, I, I think you will need to participate too. Accreditation only can take you so far. Uh, you know, we have done our part. By we, I mean Dr. Arjad and his team to get the accreditation, but you are part of accreditation. They require that you, you, you clear step one, for example, before you go into clinical rotations. And those are the kind of things that you will have to participate in and you have to achieve. Uh, this is not a run of the mill school where uh, you know you you finish your MD5 and then you move on to clinical rotations. It's not going to happen until you clear a step one and then you go into clinical rotations. So you will have some responsibilities too to keep the accreditation going. We have it for six years, which is like December of 2028. But in between, you'll be participating in very well and you you'll be you'll be part of uh, the team. So. Welcome, enjoy, and at the same time, there are curious people here who uh, will agree with me that you know don't get bogged down with just studies. If you have two hours a week, enjoy the island, enjoy the culture. I think you will cherish that as well when you leave the island and we are somewhere else. This is part of your experience. So, welcome, welcome to Avalon. Thank you. So thank you very much once again. And let's all give all our speakers a big round of applause. Before we commence the white coat ceremony, we would like to take some time to recognize some of the special individuals currently enrolled at Avalon. These students have been selected to receive awards of excellence based on merit, class attitudes, and initiative. To present the first set of awards this evening, we would like to call Dr. Dorothy Pietra-Yanga to the stage to give the MD1 awards. So our first three awards will be awarded for achievements in the following MD1 courses. Epidemiology, Biostatistics, and Biostatistics, uh, Molecular Basis of Medicine 1, and Clinical Skills 1. So we would like to congratulate Ruangi Simaje. Please join us on the stage to receive your awards. Thank you very much, Dr. Dorothy. We would like to call up Dr. Shokat Fatih to present the MD2 award. She can come up too. <laughs> you can both join us on the stage. Please give them a warm welcome. if you don't mind. I think this is the first time I ever heard she called Mrs. Chancellor, so congratulate her. 
<laughs> the next three awards will be rewarded for achievement in the following MD2 courses, Clinical Skills 2, Molecular Basis of Medicine 2, and Mind, Brave, Mind Brain and Behavior 1. Congratulations, Sheet, uh, Sheeta Vazadevan. Come to get your awards. award for MD2 will be rewarded for achievement in evidence-based medicine one. Congratulations, Sheriyar Aziz. Please join us on stage. So thank you very much, Dr. Shokat Fati and um, Mrs. Counselor. So next, we would like to call on Dr. Rajpur to present the MD3 and MD4 awards. First on up, we have the MD3 Award for Achievement in the Mind, Brain, and Behavior 2 course. Congratulations, Nicolina Serkanian. Please come join us on the stage. So we'll be moving on. The next award has two recipients. These two individuals are being recognized for achievement in the Evidence-Based Medicine 2 course. So congratulations, Aquinta Misik and Nicolina Sarkanian once again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, we would like to present the MD4 Awards of Excellence in the Evidence-Based Medicine 3 and the Diseases, Immunity, and Therapeutics 2 courses. Recipients of the two award is Tamiloa Chidika Kevin. Congratulations. Congratulations once again to all of the award recipients. We would now like to commence the white coat ceremony. This ceremony is important because it provides us with the opportunity to reflect on what it means to don the white coat and to join the order of physicians. So when you wear your white coat, it's not only a privilege but also a great responsibility. To prevent to present the white coats this evening, we would like to welcome Dr. Dorothy Pietra-Yanga, Dr. Shokat Fateh, and Dr. Raj Pura onto the stage once again. Please give them a warm welcome.
So we would like to start with Abinaya Venedja. Next, we have Jenny Venadja. Next, we have just um, Joseph Acqui. Next up, we have Omolara Adelaide. Next, we have Justin Almedia. Next on up, we have Emmanuel Baber. Next up, we have Danielle Dean. Glory and EG. Next stop, we have Liba Facilia. Next, we have Dindini Figora. Nasser Fatur.
Next up, we have Anushka Halagati. Next up, we have Aman Khan. Next, we have Judy Lee. Next up, we have Samia Mahreen. All right, next we have Zara Mehdi. Next up, we have Aquinto Messick. All right. Victor Nizegwu. Next up, we have Amanda. Khadija Sase. Next up, we have Karanam Sirem. Next on up, we have Shamama Shakawat.
Next up, we have Shashwat Shambu. Ashlisha Shrashta. Finally, Neil Thomas. Looking good, everyone. So for the next segment of this ceremony, we would like to call all the students who have been white-coated up onto the stage to recite their Hippocratic Oath. The Hippocratic Oath is the most widely known of Greek medical texts. It requires a new physician to swear upon a number of the healing gods that they will uphold a number of professional ethical standards. So joining us on the stage is the Dean of Avalon University of Medicine, Dr. Urja. Please give him a warm welcome. Say, they help repeat it? Yes. Congratulations, all of you, once again. Uh, I, will, uh, I will say the Hippocratic oath. Uh, after every statement, you should uh, repeat the same. Okay? And I hope you have the oath, all of you have the oath. I publicly acknowledge and accept the privileges and responsibilities given to me as a physician in training and dedicate myself to provide care to those in need. I will approach all aspects of my medical educa my education with honesty and integrity, embracing opportunities to learn from patients, teachers, and colleagues. I will always maintain the highest standards of professional conduct. I will certify only that which I have personally verified, and I will neither receive nor give unauthorized assistance on examinations. I will respect the humanity, rights, and decisions of all patients, and will attend to them with compassion and without bias.
I will not forget that medicine is an art as well as science and that warmth, sympathy and understanding are integral to patient care. I accept the responsibility to improve the standard of health my, in my community to increase access to care for the underserved and to advance medical knowledge. I make these promises solemnly, freely, and upon my honor. Congratulations. Thank you so much uh, for reciting the oath along with me, and I hope uh, you co you commit that, okay? And uh, hippie pure, congratulations for all of you. Thank you so much. Welcome to Avalon University School of Medicine. All right, congratulations students. You have officially begun your medical school journey. Now before, now, before we conclude today's program, we would like to announce the next set of academic awards. These awards are to recognize active participants in the annual Avalon Research Symposium. These awards, presented by Dr. Jonathan Lambeau, are to acknowledge the efforts of Avalon students in presenting their scholarly work and to help organize the event. So please give Dr. Lambeau a warm welcome. So the first set of awards go to the students involved in the research presentations at this year's symposium. Now, a lot of them couldn't be here with us today, but we would still like to announce their names to acknowledge their efforts. Firstly, Ms. Zalika Brodak. Darav Patel. Manion Kandengoa. Diana Senior Crosby. Disha Shah. Adinaya Adebona. Rosa De Leon. Aquinta Missick. Next on, Sharon Shaji. Sharon 
Sheetha Vasudevan. Sharia Aziz. The next set of awards will be going to the student leaders and organizers of the symposium event. Inga Wilters. <laughs> Zaira Kaiser. Hazim Musa. <laughs> Steve Amir Thiraj. Rosa De Leon. Brian Felix. And finally, Tanvi Kapandankar. Congratulations, everyone, and thank you, Dr. Lambeau, for joining us on stage. For the final set of awards, we would like to ask Dr. Andrew to join us on stage. Please give him a warm welcome. So the next set of awards goes to the students involved in the surgical skills class. This is an elective course read by, um, led by Dr. Andrew. He teaches students how to master manual skills in trying surgical knots, different type of sutures, and the basics of laparoscopic techniques. First, we'd like to call up Gibran Haider Vakil. Joseph Parrish. Mehdi Raza. Sukanya Apada. Jordan Polo. Zibing Feng.
Thank you, Dr. Hendricks. So congratulations, award recipients. That concludes today's program. Once again, we want to emphasize the importance of your white coat ceremony. The white coat reminds physicians of their professional duties as prescribed by Hippocrates to lead their lives and practice their art in uprightness and honor. Moreover, it's a symbol of our profession. The donning of the white coat is a century old tradition. It originated in scientific laboratories and was adopted as a standard of dress for physicians who incorporate scientific principles in the practice of medicine. As for students, it serves as an important motivator and it remains a reminder that we are one step closer to achieving our goal of becoming practicing physicians. So your time, your time at Avalon will be very memorable. So we can assure you that you're in very capable hands by the faculty of Avalon's university. You will come out as a better physician for your future patients. Our curriculum at Avalon University is exciting, and we have no doubt that each and every one of you will thrive in it. You will be well prepared for every challenge along the way. It's going to be a bumpy but enjoyable ride. So we're excited to work with each and every one of you as you progress through medical school. And we look forward to working with you as colleagues in the near future. So congratulations again, and welcome to the awesome family. All right, we'd like to call up the students who are white coated today for another picture, maybe with the faculty as well. So please come and join us on stage. so you can go help yourselves. Thank you. Thank you.